Welcome back to the Forensic Detailing Channel. Do not forget to subscribe, great to see you. So in this video, I've got a Porsche 987 Boxster belonging to the DTC, to the Dan, to the Timeless, to the Classics, that um, I'm just storing in my garage for him. But I, I'm gonna basically valet it for him. I'm not gonna use the word detailing because um, all I wanna do with this, it feels more like a valet. I just want to um, take it outside wash it, get these wheels which are really nice, get them really clean and get all those barrels completely clean, get that back to paintworks, so there's no embedded dirt on them. Um, then probably put some, you know, like spray wax in them or something, you know, some, I'll put some G on wet coat. Dress up the tires and all that sort of stuff. So then we've got good tires, we've got good wheel arches. I won't dress the arches, I'm just gonna clear them out with the brushes. Um, when I wash the car, I'm gonna, it's, it's just got crap on it. It's hardly any road film. It's just like a little bit of crap. Uh, like a, a slight slimy layer on it as well. I don't know, it's got something on it. Uh, so just wash it. I'm gonna wash it at Built Hamber Touchless, like pre-wash it, and then wash it, contact wash it again with Touchless, and then just use that Rupes wash mitt and go around and wash it and then clay it at the same time. Um, it's hard to tell, but I don't think the paint's, I think the paint's low on contamination. <laughs> It's hard to tell. I don't want to sort of drag my hands over it too much. There's a little bit there, but I think it's pretty. It's been it's been looked after this car. Before I do that, before I take it outside, before I get this um, soft top wet, I'm just going to get some tape, sticky tape, like packaging tape, and just go over this because there's some really fine little fibres that are difficult to remove. You use like a pet hair brush to try to drag them off. When it's just a small amount of hair, just a little bit of sticky tape on the top on your hand just to get that those hairs off of it. Um, once the car's been decontaminated very rapidly, wheel, wheels and paintwork done, um, what I'll probably do is give the engine, actually no, you can't with this, can you? Because that's like a boot, you can't, like, it's not a 991, it's a boxer, so you can't even see the engine on this. So I'll just vacuum out that. So after I've washed it, I'll dry it off and bring it in. That's what I'll do. And we'll, we'll APC out the um, soft top and give that a good scrub and then just rinse off. Won't we use too much detergent. Just rinse all that off. We'll probably put a sealant uh, water, you know, fabric sealant on top of that. Uh, I've got one from Wax is Dead that's repellent. Um, then on the inside, we'll just vacuum all of the inside out and just do a quick clean on the leather seats. We'll just dress the door cards probably, nothing slimy, just something that's gonna set. Inside's in remarkable condition. This car is up for sale, by the way. It's in really amazing condition. Um, it's done, I think, 158,000 miles. And it's just, it's a Boxster, a 987 Boxster. Drives really nice. Just great cars these are, probably the best sports cars you can get. And uh, yeah, contact Dan if you're interested in this car. It'll be, it'll be really cheap probably the cheapest one out there. Um, that's more or less the detail. Once the car's in, oh, I'll dry it off obviously, and I'll polish it with, probably with the Rupes Advanced, probably. Although, yeah, I might just, just to be different. I think I'll give it, I'll probably use this 3D speed actually, just to be different. Um, I used the Rupes Advanced last time, it's brilliant. This is good though as well, this is great. This will get the car looking amazing. It'll be like, it'll be popping. Um, and ultimately the headlights, they don't need doing. They're in good condition. Um, yeah, it looks like really unbelievably good paint on this car actually, because normally something about high mileage is covered in stone chips. So I can see just looking down at that, the edge of that bumper, it's been painted at some point, which, which is good, because if it hadn't been, it would need it. I don't know if this has been painted, but these are in good nick. So I think we've got really good paint on this car as well. Um, that's it. Why is that not a detail? Well, maybe it is. That's probably, this is what 99% of car cleaning is, is you've got like a limited amount of time to turn this car around. You want to do it as quickly as possible and you want to get the maximum bang for buck. Um, do you want to be doing paint correction on this car? You know, where you got, you put it inside and you get the light on it and then you, you really cut it until you're happy with this level of swirling and then you finish it out. Problem is, as we said before, any 
time where you've got to go on the paintwork more than once. You go around the car, do something, go around the car, do something again, go around the car, do something again. That's the bit that takes all the time and you can't always do that. But this for one pass, one set and protection is the most sort of bang for buck you're ever gonna get time-wise. Um, and you'll do it relatively rapidly. You do want to make sure when you do your polishing set with this that you, you do a good set, you know, and you really get up to the edges and you try and do a good consistent set, you know, rather than just randomly hit bits of it, right, polish there, over there, over there. No, do a good con consistent set, move on, good consistent set, good consistent set. Such an easy car to do because it's a small car and you haven't got to do the roof or really any of the pillars. Uh, just get the little mini polisher out there, probably mask those up, just give that a quick polish. Is that a scratch or is it a hair? No, it's a hair. Um, yeah, so it's a very easy car to detail, actually. A really nice car. This must be one of the nicest layouts of paintwork <laughs> to polish. It's all there for you. It's all like a waist height. Really good. What about that lower? You haven't got to worry too much about that. That face is inwards at an angle, so that's probably going to be quite contaminated and uh, not the best paint because it's where it gets you get all the stone chips. So not too worried about that dirty strip underneath, but we'll, we'll give it a little hit. So let's get stuck in, guys. Doug. <laughs> Okay hey guys, so we're just using a fabric safe citrus and a tapika brush. And um, it's not too dirty this, so just brush gently. Just gonna brush in little circles, work your way over the hood or the, the canvas. Um, fabric. If it's really dirty, then extracting is the way to really suck all the dirt out. But when it's this kind of clean, just working it with the brush and then rinsing it yes you can use the pressure washer you know keep a good couple of foot away from it and then, it, then there's hardly any pressure and you're not going to damage it if you go right up close to the fabric the pressure washer you can puncture it or damage the stitching you know or the, or the fabric so you have to use a bit of common sense it's going to need thorough rinsing and basically all you have to do is just keep going till it's as clean as you want it that's it sometimes they're so dirty it's a nightmare and you have to do it like five times with extraction other times you just got to give it a good scrub and a good rinse with a bit of push from the pressure washer there we go so that is the roof you always get into those crevices and the edges and the gaps we we'll put this camera down make sure i've got it all really just probably want to go over that one more time just to make sure I've got it all quite quickly.
Okay guys, so it's washed and it's wet still. Now it's onto the decontamination. Now this, we're gonna use the Rupes wash mitt there. I've washed the car in that bucket of water and I'm not too, not too happy about the idea of, uh, you know, it's gonna be a bit dirt in there. So you could rinse that bucket out. You could refoam the car again and not use the bucket and just clay over the, the foam layer over there. Or I think what I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of waterless wash. Well, you could just clay onto that water, really. You really could. Now, if I cover it in rinseless, um, they say it leaves nothing behind, but it does, because I can see, see it when I smother it in rinseless, there'll be a little bit um, of like residues, but you can just buff it off. But I don't wanna cover it in rinseless, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of rinseless over the water. Which is just going to help. If, if this car was dry, then the clay cloth would be sticking. It'd be horrible. You would just scratch up the paint. But nice and wet. You really probably could foam this as well. But I don't think we're dealing with tons of contamination here. This car was covered in spray wax. It feels nice and smooth. So actually before I, well, actually it's clean, it's clean enough. It's clean enough, but I won't be dunking it back in that bucket again. And just go over this really gently. Gently, gently, gently. It's gonna, you can see all that protection there, it's gonna come off. Gently. It's nice and smooth actually. I don't even know if this needs claim, but yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, it does a little bit. It's probably been spray wax, so it feels nice, but I don't think it's been clayed. Yeah, there's a roughness to this paint. It's been spray waxed over the over the contamination, probably. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna uh, clay it, are they? This, no matter what anyone says, does not get as much contamination off of the car as clay bar. Going in with the clay, it just doesn't. But if you've only got a few hours to do a car, oh, it's rough down there. If you've only got a few hours to do a car, then you can clay it with like this in 10 minutes, which really does save you a lot of time. So, but it's not as good, I don't think. Yeah, it's all smooth up here. There's nothing really to clay off of on these top panels. All right, you get the idea. So, clay all of that, clay around there. Don't have to worry about the roof. Clay the front, clay the front bumper because there will be stuff on there. Just give that a little wipe, clay under there. Uh, yeah, five minutes, I'll be back. Okay, now we're gonna dry off the car. So I'm gonna use this little Diddy flex blower that has very little power. In fact, some of you would think this was utterly rubbish, but it's not all about the power. As I've said, this doesn't blow dust everywhere, even though you won't if it's wet. But if you use this inside, it will still blow dust, but less. You don't have to bend over with it, it's cordless. And it's just for blowing in all the areas inside, under that seal, the wheels, and some of the gaps, and it will do a good job or a decent job. Then we'll towel it off after there. You get all the water out, it won't run down later on. Oh, hold on. I'll have to towel some of this. Poor rinsing John. Got soaks on this car. I'll pick out the towel. I want to get everything out of the crevices.
job this thing. Those, those things have got a dome. Look at that one. Seems like that in this car. We'll leave that open, we'll towel all that. Get any little bit. So that's just blown out the water out the crevices. Now I've got to grab a drying towel and go over the car. I'll go on time lapse for that, or else you'll all, uh, you know, do. thing I want to discuss guys is how long should it take you to prep a car for machine polishing well the answer is probably a minimum of one hour shouldn't it there are exceptions if the car was really really mint and clean and decontaminated you could just wash it very quickly and dry it off and then away you go but most of them need some form of claying somewhere don't they um, really it's going to be a minimum of an hour and a maximum to prep a car of it could be like three or four hours if it's really, really bad, couldn't it? Um, now, you could choose as well before you bring the car in to now vacuum out the interior, vacuum out the front, you know, the frunk and the, and the boot, um, you know, storage compartment, whatever. Just get that vacuuming done then get the car inside, which is what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to vacuum that while it's outside. Um, and then when once the car is in... You could just spend a little bit of time just looking at the paint levels around the different panels to make sure that there's nothing alarming, that there's no panels down on like 80 or 90 microns of paint. But you want to get started, wouldn't you? You'd want to be starting this car very soon. If you're only doing a single stage like this with um, 3D speed, which I'm certain will be brilliant, you could get around that Boxster. I reckon you'd get around that in about two or three hours, you know, if you don't take a break, just two or three hours of set after set after set after set. Yeah, you're not going to be doing all that slow polishing with nano tools and stuff like that in all of those little grills. You're just going to really be hitting along there, up there, and along there, that little bit there. Try and get that bumper done. <laughs> Try and get that bumper done as quick as you can. The bonnet and the wings are going to be really easy. The doors are going to be really easy. The rear quarter and the rear... Um, boot lid are going to be really easy and the bumper rear bumpers could be really easy actually it's probably an easy car in terms of the panel layout the only thing is because it's got aftermarket paint in various places and it's covered in overspray uh fine overspray 
that's just going to slow everything down perhaps a little bit. We're only going to get this to a certain standard as well. Um, because you can only go so far with a car that's done 158,000 miles. You could spend three or four days on it if you really want to. But it's, you know, I wouldn't. I would just, even if I owned this, I would only ever spend, you know, I'd probably just do what I'm doing, really. That's probably good enough for me. Uh, but, yeah, you could go to town on it if you wanted to. Love these cars, though. Remarkable. Great thing about these little Porsche Boxsters is you can pick them up for next to nothing. And they're great, great cars for the money. What better sports car? could you get than this little 987 Cayman, uh, 987 Boxster, you know, for less than 10 grand. It's ridiculous, amazing. So contact Dan if you want to buy this. Good car. Don't quote me on that, though. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, sub, sub. Yeah, over and out. Brain shutting deal. Bye.